They say there is no second chance to leave a first impression. And yet, there are so many apps that require creating an account before you can even start using them. Asking users to create an account and come up with a strong password adds a lot of friction to the onboarding process, and many users won't even end up creating an account. They will just uninstall your app. Remember, on the App Store, your competition is just a tap away. So if you want more users to give your app a fair chance and experience all the amazing features you poured your heart into, you should remove the speed bump and make the onboarding process as smooth as possible. Hey, my name is Peter. I'm a developer advocate on the Firebase team. And today, I'm going to show you how you can streamline the onboarding process of your app and reduce the number of people who uninstall your app before even giving it a try. So. Why should you ask your users to authenticate in the first place? Well, there are a number of reasons. For example, you might need a way to get in touch with your users, for example, by email or by sending them an SMS. If you're developing an app for a delivery service or a ride-sharing app, you might even want to be able to call your users. Another very common reason is that you need some unique identifier that you can use as a key for the data you store in the app's backend. For example, if your app is a cross-platform to-do list app, you want to make sure that your app can tell the to-dos of all your users apart. It would be a data privacy disaster if someone else would be able to see your to-dos and vice versa. The same applies for a bank that needs to make sure only the account user gets access to their banking account. Another reason for putting up an authentication speed bump might be to artificially limit the number of people who can use the app and create scarcity. Or maybe your app is an admin front end for a resource that requires some form of authentication, like the machines in a factory. All of these are valid reasons for asking your users to sign in, but not all of them require an upfront authentication. So here is the demo app we've been building in the past couple of videos about Firebase authentication. In all of the past videos, we've asked the user to sign in before they can even start using the app to track their favorite number. And that makes sense if you want to use their user ID as a key for data stored in the backend. Our app will hopefully be used by thousands of users who want to track their favorite number. And we need a key to identify which favorite number belongs to which user. But I am here today to tell you that we don't actually need to ask our users to create an account before they can start using the app. So in this specific version of the app, the user can start using the app without first signing in. And still, all of their data will be stored in Cloud Firestore using a unique key which helps the app tell my data apart from your data. What's more, when the user really likes the app, they can then sign in, which gives them a number of benefits. For example, they can sign into the app on another device to access the same data. To make this work, I've implemented anonymous auth and account linking in the app. Anonymous auth allows users to start using the app without having to sign in. You can think of this as guest accounts. Account linking, on the other hand, allows your users to sign into your app with multiple authentication providers. For example, a user might sign into your app with email and password first, but later decide they would rather sign in using Google Sign In or Sign In with Apple. Account linking allows you to connect different authentication credentials and roll them into a single user account. Bringing anonymous auth and account linking together like this allows us to implement a smooth onboarding flow like the one I just showed you. Let's first implement anonymous auth in our app. If you want to follow along, you will find the starter app in the GitHub repository for this video. The link is in the description below. All right. So anonymous authentication is one of the many authentication mechanisms that Firebase Auth provides out of the box. When a user of your app uses a feature of your app that requires authentication, call auth.signin anonymously to sign them in anonymously. This will create a new Firebase user with a user ID that is unique to your project. But other than a user who signed in using, say, email and password authentication or sign in with Apple, 
an anonymous user doesn't have any personally identifiable information on them. Their UID is completely random and not connected to the person's identity or the identity of their device in any way. You can use the UID as a key for any data that you want to store for this user. In our sample app, we want to let users store their favorite number in the cloud, so we need to add a user ID property to the Firestore document that we use to store this data. Depending on the use case of your app, you might store other kinds of data. For example, your app might be a photo sharing app, and you might be using cloud storage to store your users' photos. You can use the user's UID as part of the path to all their photo files and store all of the user's photos in the same folder. To allow users to start using your app without having to create a new user account, call sign in anonymously as early as possible in the lifecycle of your app. But first, it is a good idea to check if there already is a logged in user. This will be the case if the app was launched before. In this case, there would be an anonymous user who is already signed in, or the user signed in using one of the other authentication providers. Either way, if there already is a user account, we don't need to sign in anonymously again. But if the current user property is nil, no user is signed in, and we should call sign in anonymously to create an anonymous account. Since this is an asynchronous call, we will have to call it using a wait. Doing so will suspend the current function. This makes sure the application doesn't freeze while we're waiting for the result of this operation. If the call succeeds, the user is signed in anonymously. And in case the call throws an error, we'll assign the error message to the error message property on the view model to let the user know something went wrong. Now, you might be wondering why we don't use the result of this call. The reason is that we've registered an authentication state listener, which will react to any authentication state changes. So whenever a user signs into our app or signs out again, this piece of code up here will be run. This allows us to centralize any code that updates the UI state based on whether a user is signed in. Using anonymous authentication is the first step to implementing a smooth onboarding experience. But there is more. Users might want to be able to use the app on their other devices or share some of their data with friends and family. For both of these use cases, we need to be able to refer to the user's data by using their user ID. And that means we need to be able to have a human readable handle that we can use to refer to this account. This will require upgrading their anonymous account to a permanent account. To achieve this, the user will have to authenticate using another authentication mechanism, for example, Google Sign In, Sign In with Apple, or any other of the authentication providers supported by Firebase Authentication. Once a user has successfully authenticated using one of these providers, we can link their credentials to the existing anonymous account. Upgrading an anonymous account to a permanent account in this way ensures that all of the user's data will still be accessible to them. This works because the upgraded account will keep the UID of the anonymous account. Let's see how we can implement this in our sample app. A good place to upgrade the currently signed in anonymous account to a permanent account is the sign-up screen. When the user uses one of the authentication mechanisms provided by the screen, we will then use the resulting credentials and link them to the anonymous account. Let's implement this for email and password authentication. First, we will use the email auth provider to create an auth credential for the email and password the user typed into the signup form. We will then check if there actually is a currently signed in user. If there isn't, something is seriously wrong with our app, and we will throw a fatal error. We'll then call the link with credential function on the anonymous user to link this email and password credential to the anonymous user. This will effectively upgrade the anonymous user to a permanent user account that can now sign in using the email and password credential provided by the user. Since the authentication state of the logged in user didn't change, they are still signed in after all, the authentication state listener will not be triggered. This means we will have to extract the updated user account from the result of this call and assign it to the user property on the view model. And finally, we will return true to let the caller know that linking the account succeeded. 
Let's run the application one more time to see the result of our work in action. I'll first reset the simulator to make sure we've got a clean slate and to prove that we are running the application for the very first time. Once the application has launched, we see the main screen with the picker for the user's favorite number. At the bottom of the screen, we see that we're using the app as guest user. I'll refresh the list of users in the Firebase console, and we can see that there is an anonymous user with this UID. I'll change the favorite number to 17, and the quick look at Firestore shows us that there is a Firestore document with this number, and its user ID field contains the UID of the anonymous user that signed into the app. I will tap in on the login button to open the login view. To link the anonymous account to an email address, I flip over to the sign up page and enter the email address of the user I want to sign in as and pick a password. When I tap on Sign Up, the app links these credentials to the anonymous account and dismisses the sign up form. Back on the main screen, we can see that we're now signed in using this email address. Let's take a quick look at the profile view to see more details about the signed in user account. Since this account is now linked to the email address I provided when signing in, it no longer is an anonymous account, and consequently, it's not a guest account anymore. Let's double check this by looking at the Firebase console. And sure enough, we can see that the user with this UID, which used to be an anonymous account, now has an email address as its identifier, and the only authentication provider linked to it is the email authentication provider. To demonstrate that the data stored in Firestore can now be accessed from any of the user's devices, I will launch the same app on a second simulator. Again, this is a fresh simulator, so the app hasn't been run on this device before. Once the app launches, we're signed in as a different anonymous user. Let's open the login form and sign in using the email address and password we just used. Once I hit login, we are signed in as fredfirebase at gmail.com on both devices, and we can see Fred's favorite number on both devices. Any changes I make on one of the devices will be reflected on the other one, and vice versa. Great! You just saw how to use account linking to upgrade an anonymous user to a permanent user. But account linking also works in other scenarios. For example, when a user first signed in using email and password authentication, but would then like to sign in using a federated identity provider like Google Sign-In or a sign-in with Apple, you can use the same approach. You first need to make sure the user is signed in using their original authentication mechanism. Then you ask them to authenticate using one of the other authentication providers you support in your app and link the credentials returned from the provider to the existing account. For more details about this, check out the documentation, specifically the section about verified email addresses. So there you have it. We've optimized the onboarding experience for our users by using anonymous auth and account linking. Removing the need to sign in or create a user account before being able to use the app reduces friction and makes it much more likely that people will actually use your app. So the next time you implement authentication in your app, consider using this approach. As always, the source for the sample app is available on our GitHub repository, and the link is in the description below. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below or hit me up on social media. I am at Peter Fries on Twitter and at Peter Fries at iosdev.space on Mastodon. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>